food like this is fantastic. Oh, that's really good. Dig in. When you think of Dublin, you might think of it as, say, the home of Guinness. James Joyce. Writers like Patrick Kavanagh, Brendan Behan. But when I think about Dublin, I think of it as a place that's really alive and buzzing with culture today. It's a contemporary European capital, but at the same time, it's a city that has a history dating back over a millennium. I'm Ben. And I'm Catherine. And we're the authors of Dublin on a Shoestring. And this is Our Dublin. In the past couple of years, Dublin's become a much better valued place to eat. The Celtic Tiger economy gave us all the taste for their really fancy stuff. But you can now get great deals, even in the highest end restaurants. 20 euro, two course lunch deals, pre-theatre deals. So always keep an eye out for deals. The Paris Court Townhouse is a shopping centre in the heart of Dublin that was converted from four Georgian townhouses. It's now the home of shops, galleries and restaurants, including Café Fresh, one of Dublin's best vegetarian restaurants. Hi, my name is Mary Farrell. I'm the owner of Café Fresh, a vegetarian restaurant. We've been in business for pretty much 10 years. Um, won lots of awards for our food. Tell us, what was your aim in kind of setting up a vegetarian restaurant in Dublin? The Irish wouldn't be known as great vegetable enthusiasts. That's absolutely true. Well, the, the first reason was um, I was vegetarian, but I could not find a nice, a good place to eat in Dublin that was healthy and light and tasted fabulous. And I wanted to make vegetarian food appealing to everybody. This is um, the Cafe Fresh kitchen. It's a very small, compact, but a very productive kitchen at the same time. We we'll have our lovely soups here. Uh, well, I, my favourite soup is the tomato, pre lentil and red onion. Now, generally we have 10 salads every day. So we have a lovely organic beetroot salad, got some mushrooms and red onion in it and some parsley. And then we have our sprouted bean salad. Now we can come up to our lovely cake section. So when people have had their healthy lunch, then they can come up here and feel, well, I've been so good and healthy for my lunch. Maybe I'll have a little bit of cake. One of Café Fresh's regular customers is Kevin Flanagan, food writer and editor of the Irish independent Love Food magazine. Kevin, it's probably only quite recently that the Irish have developed a taste for food. I think um, there are problems identifying Irish food. But it's interesting now, for the first time ever, one of the Bibles of French cuisine has voted Ireland uh, the number one destination for value gourmet food in Europe. Now we have Michelin star restaurants, we have food from around the world. What would your general tips and advice be for, say, you know, the visitor who arrives in Dublin doesn't really know anything about where to eat, where to go? Yes, well Dublin is now, as you may have gathered, a city of deals. Most places have a budget and then a middle of the range restaurant and then a sort of a gourmet and it's probably good to try according to your budget one of each don't order spring or bottled water that is free for your bottle you know, tap water will do um, be very careful what wine you drink go for the house wine go buy the glass don't order the uh, 4,000 year old bottle of wine that's <laughs> quite important what could be the undoing of you I would always try to get some sort of support of local knowledge otherwise it's just throwing a coin in the air. For under 10 euro, you can get a great lunch from Itza. Itza do cookies, cakes and soups as well, but the main attraction is the fantastic bagels. There are four locations around the city and two city centre branches. 
The food is decent value and some of the best quality takeaway food you'll get in Dublin. The signature bagels are always a hit. The all-day cure is a delicious pick-me-up after a night on the town. I'm here in the Fitzwilliam Lane branch of ITSA with Dominic Kemp, co-founder of ITSA and Irish Times food writer. Dominic, probably the people thinking of it at first, bagels in Dublin don't exactly go together, so what in particular made you think of bagels? Well, I suppose because my sister and I were born out in the Bahamas, we used to spend a lot of time in the States, and as a result, we loved bagels, always thought they were great. And you've kind of, you've designed the restaurant around kind of the signature bagels, I guess, and then you can customise as well. Well, what we wanted to do is we wanted really home-cooked fillings, really gourmet fillings to go into it. The thing is that the, the product appeals to everyone, so you get kids right up to grannies coming in, and it's brilliant to see actually families being able to come in and eat together and be able to eat something healthy that the kids can enjoy as well. Behind the Daintree paper shop, through a bamboo grove, just beyond the world's most beautiful bike shed, is a delightful little cafe called the Cake Cafe. Michelle, tell me a little something about the Cake Cafe. Um, the cafe is within the Daintree building, which is here. Um, it's an environmentally friendly building off Camden Street in the Portobello area of the city. We do all of our baking. We make everything here in-house. So we, um, in, behind me is a very small kitchen. Um, the baker comes in very early in the morning. She'll start the breads, the pastries, the tarts and that. We use all small Irish producers, all our cheeses and all our meats are from all small Irish farms. Our coffee's roasted down in mead. So everything is as local as, as we can manage. What's your favourite thing on the menu at the Cake Cafe? I suppose one of the very first things, and the thing that has really lasted very well, is our beans on toast. We've been doing them for about four and a half years now, and we could never, ever, ever take them off the menu. And I probably have overdosed on them a little bit, but I do still <laughs> love them. They're great. It's called the Cake Cafe. So what are some of the favourite cakes that you serve cakes. here? Ooh, um, our lemon slice is probably one of our uh, winners. It's very popular. Um, the chocolate cake is always good. Chocolate cake is chocolate. Like yeah, exactly. Cake. Why would you not? <laughs> but our cupcakes are popular. They're handy. They're kind of... You know, bite size, people can bring them away, people can bring them to parties, the same with the brownies and that. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Moving up a bit in price, for a two-course dinner at around 15 euro, try Green 19 at 19 Camden Street. Green 19 is chic and fashionable, but ridiculously cheap. The swanky decor is combined with solid, unpretentious foods like spiced lamb, pot roast chicken and organic beef burgers. They also serve a variety of tasty wines, beers and cocktails. I'm here with Colin, the manager of Green 19. You offer kind of interesting uh, combinations of foods like corned beef and cabbage, which is not something you'd normally see in a restaurant, but also things like Szechuan lamb and so how do you, how do you decide what's going to be on the menu? Um, it's a bit of fun. I mean, I think the corned beef to me is one of our staple dishes. It really epitomizes home-cooked Irish food. We try and keep the menu quite seasonal, so we have four separate menus a year. Keeps it fresh for people coming in. You also serve cocktails, which is unusual in an Irish restaurant. My background was always cocktail bars. Uh, that's what I brought to the mix. Adam, my brother, is the chef, so obviously he has the, the years of experience in good restaurants. It adds something different that you will not find in everywhere else. So. so it's usually pretty busy whenever I pass by on Camden Street. There's usually a bit of a buzz. Like we said, it's a community restaurant, so we get people bringing in their granny for Sunday dinner, or you have the young kids coming in before the gigs. And, a great mix, all the age groups come in. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> that's as good as I remember it being. <laughs> During the boom years, we kind of had an influx of restaurants set up. Dubliners kind of got a taste of international food for so on. Uh, do you think an Irish identity was eclipsed in that? It was kind of lost more with that? I think food, though, is generally going for what would be known as fusion. You can get really good Chinese, you can get good Indian, you can get good Japanese sushi, fantastic Italian. These would have not be uh, traditional Irish fare. But what is traditional Irish fare? Where we're a global marketplace, we're a part of a global community. The idea is to take what's best of Irish and to mix it with what's best of Europe. And all the time, you know, trying to stay seasonal. 
and trying to stay um, local.